Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain the movie Senseless, released in the year 1998. The movie begins at Stratford University. The main character, Daryl Witherspoon, is assisting a group of students on their university tour. He takes them to different departments and simultaneously completes his mailman job. Daryl ends the tour when the group reaches the starting point, and he immediately starts another one with another group. In the next scene, Daryl is napping in his room with the TV running in the background. His phone rings and he picks it up to talk to his mother. They exchange pleasantries and she inquires about the job he's looking forward to. Daryl explains that there is massive competition for the job. However, he is the top contender. His mother is concerned about his financial condition, but Daryl assures her that he's okay. Later, the university's tuition office calls Daryl about his fee payment, but with a fake voice, he tells them that someone killed Daryl. The next scene then cuts to Daryl hopping from one place to another to earn more money. He goes to a blood bank and donates lots of blood, which ultimately knocks him out. Daryl also goes to a sperm bank and exhausts himself while procuring more sperm. Then he goes to an African hair braiding salon to donate his hair. However, the owner kicks him out. At night, Daryl's roommate, Tim LaFleur, enters the room and informs him that the landlord asked for his share of the rent. He then reveals that he's giving up pleasures like having meat, drinking alcohol, and even sex. Hearing this, Daryl laughs at his friend, but the latter replies that in order to experience true contentment, one must experience pain and deprivation. The next day at the cafeteria, where Daryl does another job, his classmate Scott approaches him. Scott tells him how he's the perfect candidate for the job Daryl is competing for, as he possesses all the necessary qualifications the job demands. Meanwhile, a very attractive girl in their university, Janice, arrives at the cafeteria. Daryl gets visibly awkward, and Scott mocks him. In the next scene, Daryl attends an economics class by Professor Engel, where Randall Tyson from Smythe-based Corporation talks about the job both Daryl and Scott are competing in. He then explains the qualifications needed for the job, a perfect GPA, involvement in social gatherings, athleticism, and a link to the company, all of which Scott has. He mentions that the company will choose a winner from five finalists. After this presentation, the professor begins his class, and a debate occurs between Scott and Daryl on the same topic. The scene then cuts to an ice hockey rink where Daryl asks his coach to give him a chance to play to qualify for the job. Because Daryl has never played, the coach disagrees with the idea, even though Daryl keeps pressuring him. Daryl then pleads with his roommate Tim, who is also the captain of the hockey team, to convince the coach. Unfortunately, when the coach gives him a chance as a stopper, Daryl cannot save one goal and gets hit by the puck several times. Tim approaches Daryl in the next scene and shows concern about his financial situation, but Daryl assures him. While cleaning the campus ground, Daryl finds a pamphlet with information about a seminar in the neuropsychology department, and he takes the opportunity to earn some extra money. During the seminar, a lady tells them about a new drug that can heighten the five human senses to a new level. However, the students begin to leave the workshop as she explains the side effects of the drug. By the end of the presentation, Daryl is the only one in the room, napping. He agrees to the test without listening to the complete information for the sake of extra cash. He goes to Dr. Thomas Whedon's office, where the doctor explains the drug to Daryl. Daryl needs to inject six cc's of the drug into his buttocks every day before bed. He also warns Daryl about the disorientation he might feel during the initial usage. Daryl then goes to a KZ frat party the following night for the sake of adding new qualifications to his resume. He meets Janice again and asks her out, to which she agrees. However, he asks Scott to pledge him as a kappa. Scott denies telling him that he doesn't fit in, saying everyone else in the fraternity is boring. Daryl gets hurt and leaves the party. Once he reaches his room, he injects the first dosage of the drug, frustrated with his situation. The following morning, Professor Engel starts distributing question papers for the exam. As the exam begins, Daryl begins to experience the drug's effects. Otherwise unnoticeable, the sound of pencil, watch ticking, chewing, and the light reflected from the classmate's diamond necklace start to bother him. He gets visibly uncomfortable as his face expression and body language change. He explodes from all the reactions, and when the professor asks him to stop, he displays Tourette's symptoms. 
Daryl gets frustrated with the situation and goes to Dr. Whedon with complaints. The doctor assures him that the drug is working and the discomfort will subside as Daryl's neural pathways adjust to the medication. He also advises him to exercise his senses to gain control over them. Daryl is in a bad condition as he cannot control his senses even after blocking those sense organs. He's also disheartened because he could not make it as a finalist for the Smythe-based job. Once Tim leaves the room, Daryl tries to control his senses and can do so. He can now shift his focus from his ordinary sense to his superpower sense. Daryl is a kitchen staff for the university's program in the next scene, where the Smythe based is celebrating with their finalists. Although he's not a finalist, he uses his heightened senses to impress the panelists. To Scott's dismay, the panelists make Daryl the sixth finalist for the job competition. Later that night, Daryl goes to the KZ frat house and the board members pledge him as a kappa even though Scott tries hard to stop it. While celebrating his success, Daryl sees Janice going inside a restroom with her friend Tanya. Through his super hearing, he learns that Janice wants an intelligent, caring, and down-to-earth guy. Once they get out, Daryl greets them and, in an attempt to impress Janice, uses his sense of smell and compliments her scent. He offers to drop her in her room and uses the opportunity to get to know her. When they reach her room, Daryl and Janice make a plan for dinner shortly. Meanwhile, Tim sees Daryl using the injection at their apartment and assumes he's become addicted to drugs. The following day, Daryl skates skillfully and impresses the coach. He also sees a puck flying in their direction and catches it before anyone gets hurt. The coach is stunned and lets him on the team. This time around, Daryl saves every goal, surprising everyone and impressing the coach. The scene then cuts to an inter-college ice hockey match. The commentators express that Stratford University has a horrible history with the game. The game begins with Daryl as a stopper. As his team keeps scoring, Daryl stops their opponent from making one, and eventually, Stratford wins the game for the first time in history. The celebration begins, and everyone praises Daryl. In the next scene, he goes to the Smythe base office for an interview. He listens to Scott's interview, and once Scott comes out with Tyson, Daryl fills in the information Scott had missed earlier. During his interview, Daryl tells Tyson that he can exceed the board's expectations for the job. Tyson informs him that the board will make the decision five days after the final competition, and gives Nick's game tickets to Daryl so that he can spend some quality time with Bob Bellwether, another board member. He also wants Daryl to impress Arlo Vickers, a potential client of their company. Daryl agrees to it confidently. Later that night, Daryl cooks for Janice, and they enjoy a good dinner. Again, he impresses her, quoting Langston Hughes, whose poem Tim is reading in the other room. As Janice kisses Daryl, he releases very quickly, disappointing her. The next night, Daryl brings Janice along and surprises his family. His mother praises his character to Janice as Daryl talks to his siblings. Before leaving, he gives some cash to his mother to help with the household expenses, and she gets emotional. Later in the dorm, Tim finds Daryl using the drugs again and asks him about the medicine. Daryl lists the positive results he's experiencing, but Tim thinks he's become addicted. To prove himself right, Daryl uses the double dose this time. The following day, he wakes up with a numb feeling in his arms and legs. He loses his balance while trying to walk. Tim sees him lying on the floor and calls a support group for help. Daryl tells Dr. Thomas that he exceeded the dosage earlier and discovers that a serotonin boost has desensitized his receptors. The doctor informs him that only four of his senses work at a time due to overuse, and the fifth one constantly switches. He also says that Daryl needs to stay in bed for three days as the only way to fix the problem is for the drug to leave the system. Unfortunately, Daryl has a competition nearing and is very scared. The scene cuts to Madison Square Garden for the Knicks game. Daryl sits with Tyson and Bellwether to watch the game as Vickers arrives at the location. The game begins and Daryl starts to feel uncomfortable. First, he stops hearing and mistakes everyone standing up for the national anthem for a chance to get beers. Once he returns, his eyes get blurry and he sits in a different seat talking to himself. Vickers finds the situation amusing and keeps laughing. His eyesight returns, but a player throws Daryl to the court for insulting him. The date doesn't go as planned. Fortunately, despite the crisis, 
Tyson informs Daryl that they're still getting Vickers' account as they return from the game. Later, Tim sees a girl going into their room and runs to inform the support group. Meanwhile, the girl Lorraine, Janice's sorority sister, flirts with Daryl. However, Daryl has a problem listening to what she says. When his hearing returns to normal, she starts to kiss him and get intimate. His eyes get blurry. Slowly, his body starts to go numb and he cannot feel anything. Lorraine is disappointed as she doesn't see Daryl getting aroused. As she leaves, Janice enters the room to find Daryl lying on the floor in his underwear. She gets upset and leaves. Meanwhile, Tim brings some medics to the room, but Daryl has already passed out. They try to give him an epinephrine shot, thinking that he's overdosed, but Daryl wakes up before they can. He confronts Tim as he lays out his concerns about Daryl being an addict. Daryl tells him the truth about the medicine, but Tim is not convinced. Later, Daryl goes to the Kappa house to see Scott making a punch. Scott offers him a glass, and he drinks it. Everyone is shocked to see Daryl gulping it down without a problem, as they know it has a pungent taste. However, he ingests it quickly due to the lost sense of taste. Scott then accuses Daryl of being the weakest link for the fraternity. He makes Daryl sit in a chair and hits him with a stick, but Daryl doesn't feel a thing. The following morning, Stratford has an ice hockey match with another university, and everyone hopes that Daryl will help them win again. Unfortunately, his condition derails the game, and they lose. Later, Daryl goes to Janice's room to confess his love to her. However, he confuses Tyson with his daughter Janice when the door opens due to his blurry eyes. Once his eyesight gets normal, Janice leads him out of the room and scolds him for pretending to be a good person. Daryl tries to defend himself and assures her that everything will get back to normal soon. However, she does not trust him and leaves. In the next scene, Daryl goes to a pub to find Tim. He asks Tim to help him study for the final round of interviews for the job, and Tim agrees. Meanwhile, Scott's dad arranges a group of high-profile advisors to help him. Daryl focuses on studying even though his conditions worsen, while Scott treats his advisors like his caterers. On the day of the competition, as Daryl gets out of his car, his eyes get blurry and he asks a homeless man for help, but he takes him to an alley and beats him. The man then takes Daryl's clothes, leaving him naked. Somehow, Daryl reaches a clothing store and gets new clothes. He's shocked once he reaches the office, looking at his new, flashy, interview-inappropriate attire. Suddenly, his tongue goes numb and he urinates himself. Looking at the color of his urine, he realizes that the drug has left his system. Daryl reaches the competition room and defends his outfit by faking an allergy to other materials except for polyester. The competition begins, and by the end of the session, Daryl and Scott compete against one another. The final debate gets heated, and both of them perform equally well. Professor Engel asks them a question for the tiebreaker, but Scott fails to elaborate on the answer. Fortunately, Daryl presents the solution very well, and Tyrone offers him the job. However, Daryl feels guilty and says that he's come all this way by cheating. He confesses to taking medicine and how he used it to become the finalist. The revelation shocks everyone. Daryl tells the whole story to his family and friends. Tyrone gives him a job at Smythe Base's mailroom and encourages him to work his way up. The movie ends a year later when Daryl becomes a junior analyst, patches things up with Janice, and gets his family to a new neighborhood. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.